Okay, looks like we have a good group set up here. Let's get going. Um, my name is Pat Polingo uh, from Yale Appliance. Uh, we, we are excited here to show you the, this uh, topic today uh, about how to design and build your own out, outdoor kitchen. Uh, a couple housekeeping items before we start here. Uh, we will be recording this and we'll, we'll share this. Uh, we will share this by the end of the week with everyone. So feel free to take notes, but don't go crazy. Um, we received a lot of great questions uh, during the registration. So we'll spend some time going through those uh, during the presentation. And please feel free to use the Q&A feature uh, in the Zoom to uh, send any questions that come over and we'll, we'll get to those as well. Uh, with that, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Steve Cheinkoff, the CEO of Yale Appliance. Um, Steve's been at Yale since 1986, um, helping grow Yale from the original Boston location uh, to now the Framingham and Hanover locations. And uh, I know he's excited to share his experience from um, working with lots of different clients, uh, customers from over the years in their outdoor kitchens. So with that being said, uh, I'll hand it over to Steve. Thank you, Pat. Nothing like an intimidating shot, first shot of a, of a, of a seminar. This is a, this is a really interesting kitchen that we, uh, that we, we found. Um, if you take a look around, they, they thought of almost every detail. They had the planters on the left there. You can see you can order those direct. You've got landscape lighting right in the deck. That's pretty smart. Um, for up lighting. Um, and we're gonna get into lighting a little bit first. I gotta admit on this one, um, um, I had a lot of help. Tomorrow is about how to plan a kitchen, kind of more or less flying solo. But um, this is a relatively new phenomenon, you know, for, for people in the Northeast. So I, I had a really good bunch of people advise me. And I kind of want to give them a shout out now. Scott Grubel is the president at, at Middleby. He started, he was the president of Lynx for years, did such a good job. And now, He's the president of Viking, La Cornu, Marvel, U-Line, Turbo Chef, and probably six other lines I'm not aware of. Basil Larkin was our Bosch rep 25 years ago. He's now the vice president of a really fast growing company, um, Heston. Anyone seen some nice colored Heston grills? He's behind that. Russ Falk, I, I got to admit, I never met, but I want to. I want him like to do my barbecue. He's got his artisanal pizza. He's got a chef coat. Uh, he's someone you invite over to help you with your grill and then let him do it. Kalamazoo is, is considered to be the finest grill in the world. Ashley Smith, um, she's a direct design at Urban Bonfire. They do, all they do is outside cabinets, uh, based in Montreal of all places. And we're going to be talking about cabinets and surface materials in, uh, in the presentation as well. Let's start at the beginning. When I first started at Yale, this was, this was our outside kitchen. You know, they weatherized it, they took the, the tank out from underneath, you can tell. You got your task lighting on the right-hand side, you got your grill. Uh, that's what it looked like. And now you can do almost anything. This is an interesting shot because they put a dishwasher in there, ice maker, side burners, and grill. And you're gonna be able to do this in about 22 and a half minutes. Um, but this way you can, you, the, the thing with the outside, it's, it's, it's limited, it's like, it's like another part of your kitchen. You can do almost anything. And for that, we're gonna go into really the basics, like the ABCLM of who's gonna build your kitchen, what the questions you need to ask yourself in building it, um, the elements like sun, wind, especially wind, rain, snow, um, the fuel types you need to install. Now, what do you need to install now or last week before the ground froze? Um, we're gonna teach you how to light it, how to vent it, hopefully you won't vent it, um, the different types of grills, because there's so many now more uh, than there used to be, even over the last, say, six, seven years, especially with uh, smokers becoming more popular. We'll talk about other cooking options. We're going to talk about appliance options you can put in your outside. And then we're going to give you a framework, the most pop four most popular configurations to put them in. And then we're going to talk about the materials, especially here in Boston. Uh, you need a certain type of material. Uh, we're going to get into cabinets a little bit as well. And then um, um, how to maintain it. And then we're gonna finish with key takeaways. There are a lot of good questions. There's six really good questions. Feel free to ask um, as I go through the 
presentation. So with that, let's get started. Um, actually, let's not get started. That's me, Pat already covered that. This is my 40th year at Yale and 35 years full time. I'm pretty much writing blogs and doing some other stuff now. But let's get into the who. Who's doing it? Is it the architect, builder, contractor, landscape architect? They, they all can do it. Is this part of the outside or is this part of an ongoing renovation inside? Because you have to assign responsibility to it. Um, and once you do, uh, again, I mentioned um, in Miami, uh, I mean, this is just another room um, to, to people in Miami. For us, it's kind of a new phenomenon. So you want to have uh, a research aspect to it. You don't want to check Better Business Bureau, Yelp, Google reviews. You want to um, check the portfolio work to see that they can do what you envision. Some of the other things you need are certainly plumbers, electricians. You're going to need to visit an appliance store may, and maybe your mason or your, or your cabinet shop. So those, that's the cool of what you'll do. Spend some time here, obviously. Okay, the other thing is about, if, if the first thing's here, the next thing's about you. What are you doing with the outside, okay? Is this a place to just flip burgers? Or are you cooking, dining, and entertaining inside? Because you want to plan your counter space accordingly. When we talk about cooking on the inside, we talk about plates. When we talk about cooking on the outside, we talk about platters. So the counters uh, need to be planned accordingly. How far is the grill away from your house? The farther away, the more you need. If the grill is just kitty corner of your house, you can use the appliances already in your kitchen. The farther away, the more you're gonna to need to, uh, in your grill area to, to avoid going back and forth in your house. And lastly, how do you cook? Um, you cook with speed, which is a grill. Um, be more of a low and slow or a combination. You need side burners because that dictates what you're gonna put into it. Um, and you have a lot more options. We're going to cover some of that um, in the presentation here as well. It's funny, when I, when I asked the grill guys, it's the first thing they consider. They both said wind. Wherever, if you've got prevailing winds in your backyard, you want to position your outside grill so it doesn't blow 120,000 BTUs of smoke into your house. The other questions you ask is sun exposure. I mean, especially knowing on how... Are you, are you going to do a three season? How are you going to bend? We're going to cover some of that as well, but wind is important. How are you going to canopy? How are you going to uh, cover for uh, sun and rain and snow exposure as well? Something to consider. Okay, now let's go into fuel types. Here's what you need to put into the ground before you plant. You obviously natural gas for the grill and side burners. Okay, you need some electrical work for any kind of appliances, Ignition for a lot of grills are 120. Uh, rotisseries are, are powered by 120. To put blenders in, any refrigerators, warming drawers. Um, if you have a, uh, if you want an ice maker, a dishwasher, sink and faucet, you need to run water lines as well. You need to winterize them. Uh, maybe it's because we sold lighting uh, so long here, I'm, I'm more fixated on it. Now, in, in an inside, you need task, accent, decorative, um, and ambient lighting. You don't need that on the outside. If you put a piece of steak on a plate, you don't need an overhead recess light to be able to eat it. I think what's really important is task lighting by the grill, which this, which this picture doesn't show. I think a couple of lamps next to them, because a lot of these, um, a lot of these grills are now 23 to 27,000 B2 per burn. Um, so the difference between medium and medium rare could be 20, 30 seconds. So it's important to have the right light to see by. The other thing is the lights in your house are probably not going to be able to help you. The spotlights are too bright um, and the light is, is too ambient to use. I, I love uh, this picture. The reason why we showed it is the um, accent light. It's like Christmas all year round in your backyard. Um, you don't need task and the other elements of lighting, but I think accenting is nice. And just remember to put uh, lights by your grills. Venting. Um, almost all the pictures you're going to see on house and on social media are going to be wrong, including this one. Um, you got to remember that venting for, for your um, range inside is basically uh, moisture. Um, for a grill, it's mostly smoke and grease. Um, for that, you need to plan. And the more it's inside on a three... Um, on a um, uh, three season or more it's canopy, the more you need ventilation. 
Now this is wrong because this is a 21 inch vent. I can, I can tell by just looking at it, 600 CFM. Something on a vent, if you vent, you would need something in the order of 24 to 27 inches and a minimum of 1500 CFM to capture because smoke isn't just immediately evacuated by powerful motor. It's chambered and then it's, um, and then it's evacuated through the, through the vent. Um, the reason why I like the first picture in, the, in this whole slide deck is because the canopy is raised to protect you from your elements, but the wind will blow the smoke away. Uh, venting is very tricky. It's something to consider, you know, three C's and everything really soup up the vent because it's a very, because smoking out your house, uh, it's a very expensive retrofit to fix. So just consider venting or better yet, letting the wind take it from you. Okay, let's talk about type of grills. In tomorrow's presentation, the cornerstone is, is, is it's not cooking, but for the um, for outside, the grill is, is where you're gonna spend most of your time. It's gonna be the cornerstone and everything. And now there's so many different types of grills. So your pro types that give you high output per burner at 23 to 27,000, you have to cook really fast. They come with or without infrared sears, Actually, Lynx makes an all sear burner. I don't typically recommend that because sear is such a, it's such an extreme hot direct heat versus gas that spreads it a little bit more. You've got to really cook, you've got to stay on top of the grill with an all sear grill. Uh, but you do get a combination and, and that's, uh, that, that's a good option. Hybrid Pro, which is Kalamazoo, is, is the gas with the uh, drawer underneath for wood and charcoal to give you more flavor and texture. Charcoal gives you the heat of a, um, an outside grill, of a pro grill, but it's, it's not as easily regulated. You have to remove all the ash afterwards. Charcoal is a very popular, most professional grills will use it because of the, um, it gives you an additional texture that you can't get with gas. And then you get value grills. I mean, Weber's a nice grill and it's a fraction of the cost. Instead of getting 23 to 27,000 BTU, it's 10. So it's not quite as hot. So you have a grill. But now you have accessories that go with the grill. Side burners are very popular because now you have that kitchen element you can add to the outside. You know, cook corn on the cob, uh, lobster, clam bakes, that sort of thing. Smokers are very interesting. Highly, um, if you read reviews, people either like them or hate them because you gotta really know why you're buying a smoker. If you're looking to cook a couple of hot dogs or hamburgers in a couple of minutes, smokers doesn't do that. If you're looking to cook a brisket over two, four, six, eight, ten 10 hours, and look at it on your phone, uh, you know, from a Wi-Fi um, aspect, smokers are good because all they are is indirect electric convection. So the max heat of a grill, say, is 900. Max heat of a smoker is 400 to 450. So you're not going to get that char and that sear that you would, but you do have more flavorful cooking, especially with the pellet types. You can get any kind of pellet you want, like a mesquite pellet, flavored mesquite or pecan. You've got combinations of, of, of things. So you have, um, um, you can add flavor, but you don't get the speed and the char and the sear of the gas. Then you have ceramics, which are basically the, the, the most popular one, the Komodo Joes and uh, the Big Green Egg. And those are, actually those were brought over from Japan after World War II. Um, they're more heavily insulated. They could do almost, they could do a lot of everything, but it's, it, there is a learning curve to a ceramic that you don't have with any other type of grill. Then you have warming drawers, which are commonly underneath, keep food warm while you, while you entertain. Asado griddles, I, I love griddles. The old Yale used to be across from my lunch and that, and I used to watch the chef make everything on a griddle, omelets, hot dogs, hamburgers. Now you have it, Lynx puts that on the outside as well. Pizza is the newest phenomenon. Almost everybody's got some version of a pizza oven. We can cook a pizza in five minutes. So you have all those outside cooking options in addition to grill. Then you have different appliances, right? Appliances, everything I'm talking about should be UL rated for damp location because the composition is more metal and won't rust. But you can do sinks, faucets, I mentioned dishwashers, refrigerator, ice makers, wine units all go. Um, True is a great company, commercial company, and they manufacture a lot of this type of equipment, as does Heston Links. Uh, Perlick would be another one as well. All right, so we have appliances, we have grills, we have cooking options. Now we need a framework to put it all in, all right? Here's the framework. Here's the four different configurations 
that you will use for your outside kitchen. We'll go over them one by one. First one's the most common. This is an island. It's just a spray pan. Um, and this is really efficient. You got your refrigerator drawers on one side. You've got your Heston grill in the middle. Then if you get your, um, your uh, burner on the other side, that's a pro burner. But pay special attention to the faucet. That's a, it's called a deck faucet. This is a, this is really a good idea. Like if you didn't have that faucet and you wanted to cook say lobsters or, or, or corn and cob and you have that big tub of water that you had to bring from the inside to the outside, not really the most convenient. Um, a deck faucet will allow you to put water in right there. That's a pretty cool little idea. This is another really popular. This is an L shape. L shape allows you to cook very efficiently like, um, like the island, but then it has the, uh, the, the, the prep area on the right hand side and a place to serve your guest. guests. This is a U shape, used like, a, like an L, but gives you more, um, more opportunities for storage and seating on the far side. In there, you've got yeah, those, those steel doors, those are storage compartments. And then on the right-hand side, that's a, um, that's a wine unit. And then you got the first picture, which is galley style. The more I look at this picture, the less I like it. Um, I, I really think that, it, and what a lot of the professionals talk about is hot zone, cold zone. Which, so in my mind, I think the grill, which is on the right-hand side, if you remember the first picture, should be next to the Kamado on the other side. And then you put the sink on the other on the other side, so you have a hot zone where you actually do all the cooking and preparation, and then a, a cold zone where you can have your refrigeration sink and you can entertain. You know, entertaining with a hundred thousand B two grill in in someone's face is probably not the best idea either. I would put the grill on the other side, hot here, cold on the right hand side, but still it's a really well executed uh, yeah, space otherwise. Okay, so now you picked everything. The best piece of advice that, that was given to me was, okay, you picked everything, you think you want the configuration, now let's chalk it off. Let's pretend to make a burger. Let's pretend to use the side burners. Just chalk it off and ergometrically design it. And then you can always re-chalk it around what you think you'll need. Um, um, Urban Bonfire, we have a, a pamphlet at the end that's going to go on our website. It gives you all the possible options and kind of like a worksheet of, of what you do. But chalking off is a really good way of, of, um, of understanding your space. So pick a configuration, then chalk it off. Okay. Let's talk about materials. You know, I once went to Vegas with a builder. And you, it, they, they were uh, at that time building the Venetian. It was like, we couldn't get away. With, he's like, he's looking at how they were building. He goes, we couldn't get away with this stuff. And the reason is, you know, Vegas doesn't have very much weather. It's just heat. But for rain, snow, sleet, wind, um, especially like in New England, you need a certain type of surface. Um, a couple of years ago, I, I, I think last year, I was talking to the urban bonfire guys. He goes, well, we always recommend deck, deck time. I go, yeah, deck time. Absolutely. That's what I, I was thinking for our displays too. Then I obviously had to look it up. And Decton is, is, this is a worksheet for any surface, obviously, but they manufacture, it's non-porous. So it's got a high UV resistance. So if you leave something out in the sun, it's not gonna fade over time. You know, scratch resistant, a lot of things are, but it's resistant to ice and thawing, which after the last couple of weeks is, uh, is, is probably something we should consider. And then high resistance to fire and heat next to a, a high output grill. That's what you want. And there's a picture of what Decton actually looks like. I like the picture. I don't like the grill like on the far side and the serving area on the left side. But other than that, though, I, I think they've got the common kind of white grayish surfaces that, that, that people put on for uh, in, in their grill islands. All right, let's talk about cabinets. Um, customizing is, is great. Um, cabinet shops, masons. So if you want to put certain, you know, you grill and and because I'm going to show you some do-it-yourself options in a bit, you can customize it based on on exactly what you want and where you want it placed. That you can never get on a do-it-yourself 
uh, type of application. You want some flexibility because that's a 54 inch lens right there. And in 10, 15 years, if you want to replace it, you want to make sure you have some flexibility to replace it, especially in brick. Naturally, everyone always talks about marine grade, weather resistant metal and hinges. Everyone says that. You know, I went on five different websites to figure out what that is. And finally went to Wikipedia where they said there is no industry recognized term for marine grade stainless, although it's routinely used by many end users. Like I just, typically in a marine application, the type of stainless that they use is um, 316L, it's called, or they treat it with a chemical called turmoil to keep it from rusting. But what you want to make sure is that the outside cabinets do not rust over time. Marine grade's a, a, a term that's thrown almost, you know, by rote, but you got to make sure. I, I always thought going to an outside, going to a cabinet shop, seeing the displays in the outside, seeing if they're rusting is a good application, is a good, is a good um, indication whether they're going to rust um, in your home. But just make sure they're made out of some kind of uh, uh, stainless 316 or, um, you know, the powder coated to resist weather, especially, you know, if you live in the Northeast. But there are a couple do-it-yourself options. This is the best. Um, this is a totally stainless steel island from Heston. I love Heston. You know, you get purple. There's like, I, I think they have like 12 colors. This happens to be a purple. And, and although it's not totally customized, they kind of get it right. You get your grill on one side, storage underneath. You have your power burners on the right-hand side with a warming drawer underneath. You get your beer tap. But it's, it's all stainless steel. It's not going to weather. Um, but it's 18,000 just the island. So there are more cost-effective solutions to it. This one, Urban Bonfire. Um, they start at $7,000 for their grill islands. And this is a company that just makes outside cabinets located in Montreal. And we've been carrying for, I think, a year and a half. But if you can't trust a cabinet, a company that just does outside cabinets in a Montreal of all places, I mean, who else can make it other than those guys? But they've got a lot of really good options. If you want to say, look, I don't want to wait four to six months. I want, I want to do this in three to four weeks. I want it sent in. Then I'll put all my, um, uh, I'll put my, my grill and everything around it. This is a, a really, this is the best do-it-yourself option we've ever found. And by the way, everybody's got a do-it-yourself option. Um, and you can go to Home Depot and Lowe's and they have theirs as well. Just make sure that it, it does weather over time. Lastly, I'm anticipating a phone, phone call starting in late March, April saying the grills don't work. And I always ask, well, did you cover it? And covering is very important because the sleet storms that we have go in your grill. And the ice thaws and then refreezes and plays havoc with the elements and electrical components of that grill. So I always want to cover it. Again, you know, if you have irrigation in your backyard, you know to shut off power, gas, water, electricity, uninstall uh, refrigerator, and ice maker, dishwasher as well. So let's give you takeaways, okay? Who's going to do it and what's your strategy? I mean, how are you going to use this space? Um, and then you want to mine your elements, especially when, obviously, how long you're going to grill determines um, how you weatherize, if you're going to put a canopy, three seas, and, um, or any of those type of uh, installations. You want to rough it out now and put the, well, you want to rough it out last week. And when it thaws, rough it out, and then understand all your options. You've got a lot of grilling options, cooking options, appliance options. Understand the four configurations, then chalk it off and see if it works. If it doesn't work, try again. And the last thing is you wanna, you wanna buy weather resistant materials and make sure they're weather resistant. And the last thing you wanna do is maintain. Now, we have a lot of resources on there. We've got a barbecue guy that we write every year um, that's on there. We have the outside kitchen plan that should be going today or tomorrow on there. They'll give you all your options. Um, so you can plan it out. This um, presentation, slideshow, recording is going to be either on today's post or tomorrow's post. We've got some really good barbecue recipes on the learning center. One of my best friends from camp is actually a professional griller. 
And um, he's done some great stuff with dessert. So download those, all that stuff is free. So with that, I'm gonna ask, can you do this? You can't, just do it a little bit better, hot on one side, cold on the other side. And again, thank you. Um, kind of an odd picture to end on an inside, but tomorrow we're gonna do inside kitchens. And um, Pat, it's all you. And whatever questions that have come up. Awesome, thank you, Steve. Um, yeah, everybody, you feel free to use the Q and A uh, to send in any, any questions. We have a few that were submitted with the registration and then that are coming in um, so far. So we'll just dig into those. Uh, we had one just now. Um, Steve, you pointed out a faucet in that um, in that island grill setup. Yep. Did, you, did you call that a deck faucet? And if so, what brand carries a product like that? Um, that is a deck faucet. Um, almost every almost every brand. I mean, with Google, such a powerful tool. Um, there's there's no brand that comes to mind, uh, but there's tons of brands that come to mind. There's no one brand like I'm sure Roll makes some. Um, I'm sure most of the major brands at this point. You know, all it is is really like um, if you look at a kitchen is it's, it's really just a pot filler with a deck mount. Um, you may be seeing some pot fillers on, you know, people put them behind their ranges to fill up uh, pots. It's, it's really the same thing. If, if, if people, uh, if you give me your uh, email address, I can give you uh, some specs of some, some deck faucets to look at without a, without a problem. Awesome, yeah, we, uh, we, can, we can follow up with, uh, with everybody who submits a question. Um, so Steve, what are some what are some factors in determining which brand of grill to use, and what are some of what are some of the brands that uh, you carry slash recommend? That's a good question. Um, tomorrow we, you know, uh, well, I'm actually not talking about appliances. I'm talking about kitchen design. Um, but grills aren't like appliances. I mean, think about how many when I think about how many brands have cycled in and out of here. Um, you really need to see a demo. Uh, I remember uh, we had a chef here a few years ago. We brought in this new brand. She goes, I don't like it. And I go, why don't you like it? She goes, it's got a cold zone. I'm like, how do you know? She put her hand on the grill as it was working. And this is like a, a professional grill. And, and, and when you go, the, the, the bad part about the internet is you go to see these videos, everybody loves everything. And that's just not the case with grills. The, I would say there's, a few different types of grills that you should look at. If you're looking for the best grill, everybody knows what it is, it's Kalamazoo. Um, it's 10,000 star. They actually have a marine grade Kalamazoo grill starting at $24,000. What makes it so good is it gives you that pro heat and then you've got the uh, drawer underneath it where you can put wood and charcoal. So you have a really, really fast but yet excellent texture and flavor to it. And if you look at a Kalamazoo, it's got that deep well so it gives you a natural convection as well. Uh, I mean, when we cook in a Kalamazoo, it's not like anything else. But that said, there's some really good grills on the pro side. Uh, Lynx was the original, and you know, it's not. It's a, it doesn't have that functionality of uh, of of the hybrid of uh, Kalamazoo, but it's it's got really powerful burners. They went to a ceramic burner. They used to have that heavy brass burner that was, you can't weather cast brass. Then they went to a ceramic, which is all I don't like ceramic, but ceramic doesn't weather either. So they've got good high output. They're the only ones they have, uh, they came out with the smart grill um, five years ago that learns, it's got a learning algorithm that knows what your medium rare is. Um, they, do, they do that and then they do the sear, They've got the infrared sear that's variable. So if you want to sear something that's not a steak like fruits or vegetables, you can do that. You know, um, sears and infrared. Uh, infrared's direct heat. So they have one that's uh, a variable. That's an excellent grill. Then you've got Heston. Heston's just a, a beautifully designed grill. Um, they do the diamond cut um, uh, grates that can hold a sear. Um, on all their grates, they're like it's like heavy. It's like a twenty-pound grate, um, and then they've got the infrared as well. But they have really spectacular colors, and they're really evolving. They've got a uh, the heaviest rotisserie um, 
with um, hottest uh, rotisserie burner. Their rotisserie burner, I think, is like uh, uh, 18,000. 18,000 B2 just for rotisserie burner. So they, they do a nice job as well. And then you've got, um, um, you know, DCS, we don't, we don't carry anymore because there's availability issues. But after that, really, when you get off those three, um, Weber is your next best. And they, their summer grills are really good. They don't have the output per burner of, a, of, of the pros, but the summit's like 100,000 total. Again, it gives you, instead of giving you three burners, it gives you six, 10,000 BTU. So you're not, you're not as hot, but does it give you a smoker, smoker basket like the other ones? Um, but it's a lot less expensive as well. Um, after that, though, it's almost like after Weber kind of falls back to brands that just don't last as long as Weber, so you may as well just buy a Weber. You know, they get, they have grills starting at 379 up, you know, for a, for an island type configuration, you almost have to go with the Summit or Genesis starting at about $800. And then you go, uh, go to Smokers. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good and bad to Smokers, um, whether they hold temperature or not. Um, I, I happen to like the Traeger. I love the controls, but you really have to almost demo these to see if this is something you want. Because they do, you know, you can get the long, you can get the link smoker cab, which does a perfect job of smoking, but is incredibly expensive. Or you can buy like a Traeger. Weber's got their uh, first generation smoke fire, and you got to figure that they're going to get it eventually. But last year they had problems with temperature and everything else. But you really almost have to demo a uh, a pellet kind of uh, a stove before you buy one. Same with the big green egg. Love the big green egg. Uh, we sold it here for years. But there's a, a big learning curve. We almost need a chef to show you how to use it. Excellent. Yeah, that and that kind of segues into a next question here. Uh, you were just speaking about lots of pro style grills, but this question was: Can you use a regular grill in an outdoor kitchen? I think whoever's asking is asking it opposite, because there's no reason to use a regular grill. The regular grill is like, you know, you look at the. I love them, but you know, you look at an outside grill. Um, you know, Thermidor's is electric. I mean, what's the point? Um, although they do have the lava briquettes, they actually do a fairly job, fairly good job. You know, what Wolf's is, is just basically Wolf's an infrared sear, uh, but it's designed for the inside. I think what a lot of people are saying is, would you put an outside grill on the inside? And the answer to that is, I would strongly recommend you not doing that. Um, because I, I really believe that people will have um, uh, problems with the fire alarms, because there's just so much smoke that comes off a pro grill, you wouldn't want to put it on the inside of your house. You can do it in a three season if you um, if you vent right. And the reason why then you know um, I'm big on venting is because uh, one of our best contractors before I got started um, asked me to consult for him because he had this just beautiful house and they put a um, hood uh, they put a hood insert over a grill. And, and so I brought in some food, I brought in some sausages to figure what causes more smoke than sausage. It smoked up the room in like two minutes. Um, so I have that on my brain a little bit, but the cost of like, of that contractor to redo the chimney, redo the, uh, buy the hood, put, put in the motor, cost him 35 grand to redo that. So I would, and, and the other thing, here's one other interesting little tidbit, if I haven't convinced you not to do it, is if you put a grill on a counter, make sure that the grill um, cover goes all the way down. Because if it doesn't go all the way down, like in this case, what happens is the smoke just ricochets off the cover, like snorkels it out past the actual cook. So I would say three season, yes. Uh, 27 inch deep hood, at least 1500. Um, um, CFM or more. If you really use it, you may even want to go commercial. Okay, next up. Um, how much time should you allow between ordering your kitchen appliances, the outdoor kitchen appliances, and them being delivered? Well, I mean, I always like, we always set up Yale um, 
to, to, to kind of mimic the way I buy things. You know, I see it, I want it, I want to buy it, I want it delivered like in a week. Um, and that worked up until last year. Um, they always, when, when grow people are always they're talking about shortages now, it's, it's a reason to be concerned. Because here's how grills work typically. Grills are like, and like paddle fans back in the days when we used to sell them, is like, you're getting your allotment now, right? It's February, March. We'll have our grills February, March when we typically don't need them, especially here. But when you do need them in the summertime, there's no grills. It's like grills and air conditioners always ran out. Like when people absolutely needed it. So, and even Scott Ruger, when I talked to him, was already saying, he's not gonna have, you know, there's very few people that buy smart grills, but um, he's not gonna have smart grills um, much into the year. So really the way I would look at it now, if you know you wanna buy it, buy it now. And that's almost, that's almost true with anything, any kind of appliance. I know that, you know, building, decking and everything else, you know you want it, just buy it so you have it. Because there's, there's no real, um, I'm not, you're not guaranteed in season to get this stuff. Cool, thank you. Uh, next up, is it, um, how much countertop space should you include in an outdoor kitchen? Uh, good question. Um, is, um, again, when we talk about kitchens, inside kitchens, we talk about plates. In outside kitchens, we're talking about platters. Um, typically, um, I think for preparation, 36 inches works next to a, um, next to a grill, um, in certain areas, you know, uh, side burners and these are just internet figures. Um, I haven't actually done them out. I haven't actually chalked out myself, but it seems to be like 12 to 18 inches in other places seems to work, but you want to make sure you've got a you know, at least some spot, you know, in your hot zone, uh, 24 to 36 inches seems like kind of like the rule of thumb if you go onto uh, outside design websites. Cool. If um, we have uh, just a few questions left here. So if anybody has um, questions to add to the Q&A, uh, please drop them in just so, okay. So Steve, a couple more here. Um, you touched on this, but yeah, um, someone asked, is it okay to grill under a covered porch? I think we have the answer to that, but. Yeah, well, if you look at the, at the, first, um, at the first picture, uh, a canopy, yes. Um, yeah, you don't need, um, you don't need a, a hood. The, far, the harder, the, the, the more you drop it down, and I probably should have some kind of equation um, now that I think about it, of how far is it before you need it? That's a good question. And there's no real answer that I've seen. Um, but if it's farther up, like, like that was in that picture, you can, you can certainly do that. Um, the more um, close to the ceiling it is, at regular ceiling height, the more you need that. And then, uh, so last one for now, can, uh, can you leave that. outdoor hmm? refrigerators and dishwashers outdoors? A big part? Uh, last question here. Can you leave outdoor refrigerators, dishwashers, outdoors over winter? Um, the design for wet locations, the answer is yes. Should you? No. Um, if you, you know, if you have, uh, and I've got a, another uh, question for myself that I didn't, I just realized in this whole presentation, we talk about how much all this stuff costs. So I'll get to that after this. <laughs> Pretty significant omission. Um, you know, I, I, I really think that if you have a place to store them and you have someone that can, uh, I know it's something we could probably do of uninstalling and reinstalling um, as you shut the water off. I, I think that's really the best bet. Yeah, they're designed to be in wet location, but if you believe that appliances on the inside last six, six to 10 years, what does that look like on the outside? Um, I think you're better off storing them to be honest, but they are technically, um, designed to be outside for the winter if you wanted to. Any other questions before I answer like the central question I probably should have answered in the presentation? That's it for now, why don't you start there, yeah. All right, the, 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 the answer to the question, there is no real answer to it. I think that if you're looking to get out 
affordably and you want something like a pro grill side burners and you get like a uh, a really nice island because they're not cheap we have urban bonfires in, in, in all the stores and, and and really good displays to give you an idea um i think you're looking at seven figure seven and nine thousand for the island if you get a pro grill um you're looking at a grill head at probably around five side burners figure around two maybe an outside refrigerator around two and and i think that's a that's a that's a a good start at about figure 15 to twenty thousand dollars and and you can make this thing as with accessories you know certainly well over a hundred thousand dollars as some people have um but I, I think that should be a budget i think if you budget 20 with a pro grill and an island that's a that's a decent DIY. I, I think that's a that's a that's a good budget to start. Awesome, thank you, Steve. Uh, that's all the questions we have for now. So uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. And uh, Steve mentioned tomorrow we're back at the same time to talk about uh, how to plan uh, your indoor kitchen project, uh, where to start with appliances there. You can find that registration on our website, on our social media links. Um, so thank you again, and that's it for now. Thanks. See you tomorrow.